with, uh, with uh, excitement in your heart, with uh, Jesus' joy. I, I know you can't clap, you can't shout now. Uh, Dr. Stevie will not hear your shouting, but just go to the comment section and just let's do that welcome. Let's start again. Let's do that welcome. Let's celebrate God's grace. Let's celebrate prosperity. Prosperity is a spirit. He said, it is God that gives any power to get wet. If God doesn't give you, you won't have it. Yes. Let's celebrate grace. Let's celebrate grace. The grace you celebrate is what rubs on you and appreciate over your life. So let's celebrate that grace. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate that grace. Celebrate that grace. And we know it's going to appreciate in our lives. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are excited to have you, sir. And we are ready to drink. Everybody, get ready to drink. If you come with cup, it will be full. If you come with pain, it will be full. If you come with keg, it will be full. In case you come with tanker, it will be full. So enlarge your capacity because there is enough here to drink tonight. God bless you, sir. Welcome, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much, um, um, Pastor Daniel. Thank you. I'm grateful. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's an opportunity to share with the people of God. Um, I, I take, um, because whatever blessing God gives you as a Christian is for the kingdom. So um, it's an, any kingdom assignment should be priority any day, any time. So it's really a joy. It's been a busy day. I've just shot um, six episodes of uh, uh, investment charts in the Rolls Royce season three. So I, since morning we've been shooting, then I just finished another um, real estate coach for, for a UK student. So we finished by seven um, Dubai time, no, 10 p.m. Dubai time, so 7 p.m. and then jump into this. But um, it's something that must be done. So let's make it happen. So earlier I was sharing about how after God, okay, in terms of what is powerful in the universe, it's not the devil, it's money. And this is one of the reasons why if you look at Matthew chapter 4, okay, when Jesus was tempted, actually Matthew chapter 4 from verse 1 to 11, one of the things you will notice that the devil told Jesus was to show him all that was in the world, okay, and that he would get it if only he can give him uh, the if Jesus can bow down to him. So the question is, if money wasn't powerful, if fame wasn't powerful, all those things, why would the devil be saying, you know, because you have to measure what he's trying to compensate with. It's a function of the power in that thing he's trying to compensate. To say, you will get this thing. So money is powerful. The devil executes his project with money. God executes his project with money. And one of the statistics, thank God we're talking to pastors, that we need to understand that is the challenge for us in the body of Christ is that when you look at how much is spent on drugs every year, drug cartel, we're talking about over, okay, $600 billion industry. And that's the cartel you are fighting. Prostitution is over $150 billion, right? Um, which other industry? Can I get more industry? You can type more industry that you as a believer, as a pastor, as an evangelist, because you are taking people from those kingdom, right? Into, yeah, media. Media, let's not go there. That's, that's over $200 billion as well. So they put together, ladies and gentlemen, alcohol, thank you, the, the beverage uh, uh, alcohol industry. Another over 200 billion, go and do the, your research. They put together all the churches in the world, all, all churches in the world. Can anybody guess the value financially of all churches in the world? About less than $160 billion. You are now to stop trillions industries with trillions of dollars behind them. That's the industry you have to face. So I hope the assignment is getting clearer. <laughs> so without the funds, right, 
There's a limit. In fact, one of the things I tell people, I said that we started doing unknowingly just simply because we don't even understand the assignment is that we started re-evangelizing Christians. <laughs> We're sent to the world, right? Meanwhile, it's the people in the kingdom again who are now forcing everybody to give their life to Christ. Meanwhile, we are sent out into the world. Again, don't forget that scripture. The children of this world are wiser than the children of light. So, why do you then see that the geo with President Buhari and he still prays for him? Because that you understand what we are dealing with. Why do you think, right, that the geo is supporting redeemed members to become to go into politics. In fact, the last election, one of the reports I got was that you were saying, just let them just join parties. Any party, we don't care. Let Christians join parties. Because the body of Christ realized that money, power, we left it. And we thought we could make change. And one devil somewhere, one devil, Right? That was given one small power, one small power. One wake up, woke up one day. I said, all the churches in Nigeria, if you have spent 25 years hand over, you are no longer the Jew. Can you believe that? How many of you remember that story that a Jew had to <laughs> announce that is no longer the Jew of Nigeria? Thank God for that wisdom. To say, I remain the Jew of the world. One devil somewhere sat down and started making, and then a, a geo that command tens of millions all over the world. One guy with one small position, one small position. That is what happened to us when we neglect the place of influence, political influence, the place of kingdom wealth, one man in a particular state in the US, one man, can everybody type one man? One man, stop abortion law in his state because he's a billionaire. He spent his own personal billions to stop that law. He, he empowered lobbyists, gave lobbyists money. and said, not in my state, they would not pass abortion here. That's what we're talking about. Okay, the states they pass abortion, are there no pastors there? Anointed pastors, are they not there? Why did they still pass abortion law? So I hope it's getting clearer now when I said, after the power of God on this earth, the next is money, not even the devil. I honestly feel believers have overrated the devil too much. And I, so much, I used to have nightmare. Many years ago, I would see you, lion chasing me, see your manner. <laughs> People of God, since I became financially free, I stopped having nightmare. I slept on good bed. I ate good food. I don't have nightmares again. <laughs> there was even no anointed or needed. <laughs> Anointing oil was not needed. I just stopped having nightmares. <laughs> Since I started traveling all over the world, I was seeing good places, good places. So there was no point having nightmare. I don't have to drop from the bus stop, remember? Then you trek, then you are seeing all manner. Then the night. <laughs> are you saying nightmare is synonymous to poverty? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Nightmare is synonymous to poverty. So some of this, why do you think, thank God some people are joining us from diaspora, why do you think people stop serving God when they travel? Because 90% of your prayer point stops when you leave Nigeria border. Ah! 90% stops. <laughs> stops, 90%. So, he 
it's important to understand this so that we need to think of kingdom work. Now, the Bible says, I'm the Lord thy God that give thee the power to get wealth. And till today, the richest man ever to walk upon the face of the earth is King Solomon. So there's kingdom wealth. There is. And it's available. And there are people who have enjoyed it. And I'll give you a few contemporary example in recent times. One man called John D. Rockefeller. I want everybody to start John D. Rockefeller. John D. Rockefeller was the first American billionaire. First. If you go to Manhattan, I remember my, my, my first time in Manhattan many years ago. I said, I wanted to do a talk. Let me go around. And I was shocked seeing the busiest street in Manhattan, true story, two churches facing each other. I said, ah. <laughs> Church, I, you don't, okay, let me break down Manhattan for you. In Manhattan, they don't sell land anymore. They sell floors. So that for you to understand, that's why it was shocking that there's a church there. Let me give you a basic understanding that will help you. A developer in Manhattan wanted to buy a particular property and he offered $200 billion. Everybody write $200 billion. And the owner said no. Guess what was the conclusion of the deal, the property deal? I will give you $200 billion. I will rebuild the place to the 30th floor where it currently is. There anything above 30 floor is now my own. And you still get $200 billion. That's how expensive Manhattan is. There are two churches there. You know why? The man who built it is a Christian. Head usher for many years. If he wasn't a Christian, Manhattan would not have a single church today. Because, okay, where will you afford it? Where will the money come? Where? To buy a space, right? <laughs> How much will you need to pay? So there is kingdom wealth. And God is willing to give it to those who desire, who understand that in the end time, I mark my word. In the end time, mark my word. The people who will defend the faith are kingdom billionaires. And I call them the apostles in the marketplace. In the end time. And a version of that had started displaying itself in Nigeria, where some people started saying, oh, stop paying tax. Oh, your pastor is cheating you. Who do you think can better give a better narrative? I came out I, on my platform. I said, I'm not going to argue with you about Titan. But I will tell you my story of once I was blind, now I can see. I emptied my account to God's servants one day, Bishop Oedepo. It was, it was, how much was it? 25,000 many years ago. Right? I dropped it in offering. Monday, I got a call. Send us an invoice of 30 million. This was... I mean, as at that time, the highest single sale I've ever made was 500,000. And the voice like that of a baby said, as you send invoice, they want to buy book SMS from you, 30 million. I, well, I don't, anybody, I don't discriminate. So I send the, 30, the, the invoice. Tuesday, I got a call. We're on our way to the bank to pay. Ladies and gentlemen, that's how Malachi landed. Hallelujah. <laughs> And that single sale is what transformed my life. Because if you make a sale of 30 million and you still return to poverty, ah, if they pour empty jar of anointing oil on you, it may not work. Right? Because that 30 million is enough to structure. And today we'll build multi billion naira property asset company. That was the same year we went into real estate, 2015. Right? And the rest is history today. So I was able to share that testimony. Imagine me with church. Can any pastor come and break down scripture to convince <laughs> the coconut head that we have now? Except a testimony like that. I don't know that you understand. Once yes. I was blind, now I can see. Period. 
So I'm not arguing with you, tight to work, so tight doesn't work. But this is my story. Right? Tithing, giving has changed my own life. And that's why I said, in the end time, apostles in the marketplace are the ones that will defend the body of Christ. People who will say, look, I don't care what law you are trying to, but this Christ is the person who saved me. This Jesus, all this empire you are seeing, Jesus built it. All this wealth you are seeing, Jesus did it. That is what will be valid though in the end time. That's what will be valid. That's what will be valid. You want to stop uh, 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 abortion law? You want to stop this? You want to? It's money you will need to use. You, you need to literally paint everywhere Jesus, all billboards, all TV stations. Do you know what? Even the TV stations saying they believe in abortion, if you pay them advice to say Jesus loves you, they will play it too. They want to meet their budget. They will play it. They may let us still do their conversation. Oh, you know, imagine. But they will play the advice. This is one of the powerful secrets of Pastor Joel Austin. Media. But this thing is so much money. It's the need for money. So I want to share with you seven principles or strategies that you as a pastor can use to turn around your finances. I want you to write this down. The lifestyle of Jesus prepare you for heaven. The principle of Jesus prepare you for wealth on earth. Wisdom is that you should take the two. Take the lifestyle, take the principle. What happens? We take the lifestyle that prepares us for what? For heaven. We dump the principle. I guess who picked the principle? The children of this world. So they end up becoming richer. And what are you doing? You are disevangelizing. Because when you say Jesus is powerful, and they are telling you, can't your Jesus make you rich? You have just told that person your Jesus is not powerful. But when, right? In fact, what happens is they are the ones asking you, can you tell me how you got here? You say, Jesus did it. They say, no problem. Can I follow you to your Jesus? You know how many people are believing God because they see me talk about Jesus, that if Jesus can change this man's life with all the story I shared of his poverty, that Jesus I will serve. Do you know some who didn't even talk to me on their own said, if this man says Jesus, I'll go and call that Jesus. I'll go to church today. And that's the powerful principle. So the principle of Jesus teach you how to be rich on earth. Now, let me tell you this. Jesus had 39 parables. Guess what? More of the parable talked about money than prayer, than fasting, than deliverance. Shouldn't that tell us something? 11 out of the 39 parables are about money. All other subjects, marriage, everything was spread into the rest. Some had four. Some had five. But money had 11. Are we learning today? If we are learning, type we are learning. Yes, sir. Yes, right? sir. So that is helping us to understand that the kingdom of God will be spread through prosperity. It's very key. Prosperity is key to spreading the gospel of Jesus. So let's go to the point today. Number one. You need to start studying about money and investment and be willing to pay for it. I want to say this. <clears throat> there is the place of the manna. But manna always stops when you get to the promised land. Many of us have gotten to the promised land. And guess what we are still praying for? Manna! But well, God ain't going to give you that. Now, and I'll give you a typical example. Do you know miracle is not the perfect will of God for believers? Divine health is. Healing is not the perfect will. 
divine health is. In other words, you don't fall sick. Healing is for children. It's for new babies so that they can see, oh, I had cancer. I came to Jesus. He healed me. Now I'm a Christian. Now that you're a Christian, you don't even fall sick. Oh. The same thing is with prosperity. This, oh, I believe in God. We want to do crusade. We need 50 million. You see, that is manna. That's manna. <laughs> That's manna. Manna. That's manna. So I'll give you this story so that you understand the difference. One day that Joe was coming to our church to preach uh, Winners Chapel, and the traffic was so much. And at some point, they were talking on phone. No, they, it wasn't phone. It was just discussion about it. And I do was saying, ah, to Bishop Oedipo, at this point, we need to believe God for, you know, chopper. You know what Bishop said? This is not about believing. It's done. There's nothing to believe here. Oh. <laughs> and of course, that is Joe landed with the chopper. No regard. So that is what we are saying now. You see the difference? Mana, promised land. In promised land, we don't pray for money. We don't pray for money. That's, that's what children do. That's what babies do. In promised land, it is waiting. The money is waiting for the next program. It has, before the need arises, the supply is there, waiting. But that won't happen if you don't study what is money, what is investment, how does it work. There are three things to study, how to make money, how to manage money, and how to multiply it. How to make money, how to manage money, and how to multiply money. You have to understand that. If you do not, you cannot build wealth. You have to understand it. And you have to study it. And people of God, you have to pay for it. So let me help your faith. This year alone, I have paid 205,000 US dollars to learn from my mentor. One of them is called Grant Cardone. I've paid him $105,000 to learn. Hmm. Nothing of value is free or cheap. Not me, yes. Yes. Next year, guess what I've budgeted to learn from my mentors on wealth? $1 million is my budget for next year. $1 million. So go and learn. The Bible taught something very powerful. When I got it, it changed my life. Say, buy wisdom. Sell it not. Everybody type, buy wisdom. Buy wisdom. He could have said, beg for wisdom. He could have said, pray for wisdom. What did he say? Buy. <laughs> buy wisdom. Buy it. It's not cheap. Go and buy it. Okay, go and buy it. Go and buy it. And the children of this world, they have it. Too. We have a, a, a program that you don't want to miss. We are hosting uh, Cos uh, Cosmos Maduka. It's going to be a powerful event. I'm going to share the flyer maybe later. Right? We're bringing T.Y. Bello, myself, Pastor Limide Emmanuel. She will attend the event. They're going to be sharing. You know, it's called Believer's World Conference. We need to, this. If this is, for me, this is my next level in terms of kingdom assignment. We must raise wealthy believers. Demon chasing, tongue speaking believers. But they are dangerously wealthy. Dangerously wealthy. We have to raise such people. We have to. They are one of the powerful tools for end time evangelism. Even their lives alone. Their lives alone. Powerful too. Powerful too. So number one, study about money, please, people of God. Thank God you are studying about the Bible. We thank God for that. Thank God you are praying. We thank God for that. Please study about money. Jesus said out of 39 parables, 
11 about money. That tells you something. Go and study those 11. You can even decide to say, okay, I will read, I will read the 11 party book that focus on money and understand the biblical principle Jesus was trying to atomize it. But study about money. Master the art of money. When they asked Jesus for tax, did he say we should pray? Let's wake up. Did he say we should pray? Let's now pray. Tax should, tax should come down. And let's pay. Is that what Jesus did? No. No. He said, go to the, to the, to, to, to the river. Pick the fish. Why did Jesus do that? He said to tell you that there's a process to making money. I hope you understand this, that there's a process. Jesus could have commanded money to come down and pay them there. I mean, he did many miracles like that, supernaturally like that. Mm. So he could have done that. But he wanted to help us to understand that there is a process. This money thing doesn't work. It's not abracadabra. There is a process. What happened there, you can turn it to say, because remember, Peter was a fisherman. So another word you can call that was that Peter went to the river and caught the best fish and was able to sell it immediately and pay the tax. So God, Jesus is saying, there's a process. So we do not pray. Listen, healing, answers to prayer. Deliverance, answers to prayer. And fasting, of course. Chasing out of demons, prayer and fasting, of course. And we saw practical example in the Bible. But no money. Money does not answer to prayer and fasting. I want to beg you. If the reason you've been praying and fasting is for money, go and eat and start reading about money and investment. Go and eat. The Lord has answered your prayer. He sent me. <laughs> but if your prayer and fasting is for more power, to cast out demons, to heal. Yes, you are in order, but not for money. That's why most of the richest people in this world do not even believe God exists. Oh. That is not by prayer and fasting. Okay? It doesn't answer to that one. Number two, if we're ready, tie every given to a business or to an investment. And you give. Tie it to. You see, what happened, I was sharing with some pastors. I said, I understand what a lot of, you see, a lot of people are doing this anti tight anti-giving. Don't get it twisted. Many of them are strong Christians. Oh. They had believed God. They come for conferences. They say, come and so, come and so, come and so. They sold everything and they didn't get returns. And because we didn't teach them right. I told you I emptied my account, right? As a seed to God's servant. But what you need to know was that I had a business that could attract 30 million. Hey. You see the problem? Many don't have. So if we open your heavenly account, some of you have billions there. It's waiting till the day you create the channel. Create channel. Okay, channel, channel. When you look at Malachi, it talks about opening the windows of heaven, windows of heaven. So he will pour you out a blessing that you'll not be able to. You can't count, you can't. Listen, he said, I will bless the works of your hand. Something has channel, works of your hand. Oh, Isaac sold in the land. And that same year, he reaped a hundredfold. What happened? He was into farming. Irrigation mechanism was the divine idea to reap a hundredfold. Irrigation was the divine scientific idea that his given attracted. Jacob raised an offering. And genetics was the divine idea. The Bible talked about the fact that Jacob saw in an open vision that when he put the, 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 the stripe uh, 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 tree beside the river, the, the, you know, more of these baby was the, the, the sheep were given back to stripe once, 
and he practiced it and he got richer than, than, than his master. This means that when you sow, you must have a channel that the blessing will come through. I hope this makes sense. If it makes sense, that it makes sense. So what have we done as believers? You empty your account. Thank God for that. You don't have a business. You don't have a job. You don't have an investment. Oh yeah, how we go? Okay, so should uh, um, money be coming down from heaven? Or what are you talking about? Have a channel. Quote me anywhere today. Quote me anywhere today. Quote me anywhere today. That one of the reasons why Bishop Oyedepo is the richest pastor on earth is that one, he has created not less than 10 streams of income for the ministry. Number one, quote me anywhere. Can I say that again? Can I say that again? He has, created, he, he has created no less than 10 streams of income for the ministry. 10 streams of income, including FX. Hmm. Number two, Bishop Boedepo himself as an individual has also built no less than 10 streams of income for himself. Some he agrees to keep the money. Some he doesn't. And I'll give you a few. One day I was getting a data from somebody in the ministry. And he said, this year we sold over a billion naira in digital copies of Bishop Wedipo's book. Is it making sense now, pastors? <laughs> over a billion era in digital copies. Is it making sense now? Over sense. Aha. Uh -huh. So if you have so much anointing and you refuse to monitor, now they didn't know about even the YouTube is still not monetized. You all this your fire, Rema, Rematic Rema. You cannot monetize it on YouTube. You cannot monetize it on iTunes. You cannot start a podcast, which you are cheating Jesus, but they will put adverts, some money will start dropping. Hallelujah. Praise God. And then the rema gets increased. You know, there are certain alerts you see. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> I used to joke humorously. I said there are some of these are senior pastors. Eh? You will just see them when they are about to climb all the time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You don't know. The alert they saw before they climbed the altar, the anointing moved to gear 10. Ah! Right? So that day, eh, anointing was powerful. <laughs> so you wouldn't know. You are just, ah, our pastor, uh, unction, unction. Eh? But that unction was supported by Malachi. Hallelujah. <laughs> Good Malachi. Okay? We all know Malachi in this and some people are just joining, so they don't understand the Malachi mystery. Yes. <laughs> when, whenever we say Malachi, we mean money. Okay? So for those of you who are joining us. <laughs> so, very important that you understand that your giving should be tied to a business. Lord, as I sow this seed, GTEx homes, I did receive this month 300% return on investment. I receive 300% sales. I call for customers for this particular business from all over the world, right? As I sow this seed, I always label my seed. As I sow this seed, Lord, the, the shares I bought, the cryptocurrency that I bought by supernatural design, it must go up. It must go up. I don't know if you know Apostle Suleiman, Apostle Joshua Selman. I don't know if you know I don't know if you know him. Do you know he trades Forex? Do you know? Hmm? Ah, okay. Continue. Any of you are still... <laughs> you are... 
Okay. Many of you are saying, you know, you know, those are kind of things, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't, uh, man of God, Pastor Daniel, you know, we don't, we don't do kind of things, you know, we don't have time for that, um, you know, and I, and have you not noticed that this unction is powerful? Mm. Because when you are blessed, you will face the kingdom. You, will, you see, all this rema that is even struggling to come is because uh, <clears throat> you'll be on auto rema, auto, auto rema. You open the Bible like this, they are jumping at you. When sat, when house rent, when insult from landlord, when uh, uh, school, school fees, and your principal, you will, the scriptures will be jumping. Let me tell you this, only life is easy when you are wealthy. Righteousness is easy. Living godly life is easy when you are wealthy. Your mind is clean, clear. You can think straight. Right? You can think straight. You can think when you are doing praise and, of, uh, praise and worship, your mind is centered. One with the Holy Ghost. Not that as you are doing, the devil just bring the image of your landlord looking at you with one eye. <laughs> okay? So number two, tie every given to a business, to an investment, or even to a career, if you are into career. And by that, expand your channel. You can call it number 2B. Expand your sources of income. I tell you, I have minimum four. In Genesis chapter one, we saw when God created the act in the garden of Eden, the Bible says, and God, you know, created four rivers and each of the rivers had a precious stone. It's precious stone signifying sources of income because what, you know, uh, takes care of a garden, isn't it? Is it not water? And God gave it four, four. As a Christian, as a pastor, you must have four sources of income, four. Minimum, minimum. Our fathers in faith, they do. One of it is now the prophet offering. And let me tell you the truth, that prophet offering, it takes a level before it starts coming. One of God's servants, one particular year ago, I don't even know now, January of that year, one son brought 200 million seed. One son. But as at that year, Bishop Boidipo had been in ministry for 35 years. Young pastor, when did you start? When? To base your only source of income to profit offering is disaster. It's disaster. When did you start? When? Right? When? So have multiple. Have multiple, and there are several opportunities now. That's why I said, number one, go and learn. There are opportunities in Forex trading. You can learn to be a passive trader. There are opportunities in cryptocurrency. There are opportunities in e-commerce. Your wife can be involved in running that if you are too busy and you don't want to chase mama, you are too holy to think of e-commerce. No problem. Let mommy Gio do it but have multiple streams of income, people of God. If you, are, if you don't, you'll be tempted to steal church money. You will. You will. So there are several investments. Real estate is also there. Real estate is there. Start at your level. This is one thing our fathers got right. I, you know, I just look at how genius they are with real estate. How genius. We just acquired 96 acres, right? Just because of Redeem Car. We're even so far from Redeem Car, about 20 minutes away, uh, opposite uh, Dominion University. We're building a golf course there. Massive estate. Guess why? Because of Redeem. Mm. Hmm? Phase one, we have already gotten 96 acres. On the express, when we land, so all our senior, you know, kingdom. Uh, many of you don't know that the guest out you have is not the taste of all these DMDs and CEOs. It's just because of Christ they are managing those, those guest outs. <laughs> so we we'll build the five star hotel 
right, with a golf course. After receiving anointing from Daddy Joe, they'll come and play golf. That's their natural life. Not, uh, you know. <laughs> and so, so, you know, so we're doing that. But if me, that I do attend Redeem, for those of you who are even pastors in Redeem, I'm buying acres, leveraging on the traffic that comes to Redeem. It's a shame on you if you don't have anything. Deliver us, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so have multiple streams of people, at least four, 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 at least four. Okay, start from there. All must not be there as a business. One can be a business, the remaining three are different types of investments. Number three, because of our time, get a financial mentor. You see, I made this mistake when I was younger. <clears throat> I used to feel that all I need is Bishop Oedipo, nothing else, no any other mentor. <laughs> no regard. I have all I need. Or years later, I realized I needed business mentors and investment mentors. And, I, and, and this is very important. I need us to know that many of us here, God did not call you directly. Right? He called you under your uh, um, um, discernment. Right? So in my own case now, God called you a depo. In fact, in some cases, God called you a depo, a depo called me. And I answered. <laughs> I will be foolish, right? Hmm. To bank my finances on that. Foolish. Okay? And particularly for Edipo did this, say I shouldn't do business. Very important. So nothing stops you from still having businesses on the side while you are believing God and you're working for the kingdom. Very important, very important. Don't get it twisted. Many of us are pastors today, let's be honest, because of our influences. Some of you will probably have been top entrepreneurs if you are had the influence. And I almost fell into that. Because like I told you, I pastored from secondary school, university I pastored. But God saved me because I had some people who had gone ahead and I saw their life. So I had some, when we were on campus, one particular one said, glory God, God showed me. In five years, we'll be in Abuja. I saw 10,000 members, 10,000 members. He graduated before me. When I went to see him, it was hell. He was still pastor. But sir, we were not up to 50. After five years. So it dawned on me because our influences, right? Pastors that were coming on campus, you know, pastor, uh, um, all these pastors were coming to us on campus. So I went to Osu. And when they share the goodness of God, you know, the things happening, we didn't know when we received the vision. We received it. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know. So in all Osu that I remember. Yeah, testimony gave you vision. Yes, yes. I went to, we're doing a uh, win, um, um, they start used to do mega fest there. Me, when they do, by the way, many of you don't know, I used to be top popcorn seller in Redeem Camp every first Friday. I'm in Redeem selling popcorn. Yes, that's how low I started. One of, I mean, every Christian event, I mean, there was this mega fest in this time. I had my popcorn machine. And then again, I told you I was a pastor on campus. The head of our campus fellowship, you know, you have the joint head, was coming with all the other pastors from RCF, uh, all this, you know. And then me, I was, when I cited them, I started packing popcorn that I would give my fellow pastors, you know, my people. Do you know, as they came closer and cited me, they turned back. That this guy, they used to tell me that I'm rubbishing the anointing. Sir, so, there's dignity in labor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Paul, Paul the apostle said it many times. He said, look, I had to walk with my hands so that I'm not a burden. If you so, fine. If you know so, no problem. 
Paul was a tent maker. And he wrote two thirds of the Bible. So which one is your own? Have you written one third? It, it, the person who wrote two thirds, he was doing tent business. So you not tell me, you know, and you don't understand. Wake up. Wake up. The pastors whose churches are growing right now are the ones who have money. Let's be realistic. The days of our father is gone. When, you know, uh, when I sent you out without money and lack of DNA, that day is gone. Now, you must have something. Members will not follow you, no matter the anointing. Wake up. Wake up. There are some pastors that I don't want to go. There's a pastor in Lagos. He has one of the fastest going church. When he left this time, the, the system itself supported with 25 million. Aside all that, this here and there. So he started big. It was resources, big board here, and the thoughts was blowing. So if you don't have that kind of, you better look for a work in your hand that can support the ministry so that you're not a liability. You're not a liability. And members will not be dodging you. They say, Pastor, you will soon beg, you will soon ask for something. Right? You can, you can see members and be a blessing to them. On campus, when I receive my allowance, I'm asking, which, you know, you have not eaten. Take 1,000. Take this. Take. I will empty my money the first day it lands. Because that was how we were taught ministry. You must be a blessing to the members. Not a body. Thank you. Someone said, I refuse to be a beggy, beggy pastor. Rather than the one that will call members and say, take, have a financial mentor, sir. Have, humble yourself and get one. Humble yourself and get one. <sighs> humble yourself and get one. If not for the video that went viral about Cost, uh, Cosmos Maduka, do many of you know that he probably has one soul for the kingdom than those who call themselves full-time pastor? Do you know that? He's been doing that in the last 30 years. I don't know if you saw the video of Cosmos Maluka that went viral, where he was doing evangelism. A billionaire. Some of these people that you seem bring to become your mentor, when you come close, you know they are dangerous soul winners. They are, they are, right? And you understand that they are deep kingdom people. So get a financial mentor. Then if you have a business, get a business mentor for that business. What do we mean by a business mentor? Somebody who is already successful in that area who will then show you the way. So, for example, you want to do a real estate business now. You should get someone like me who is, who is building real estate all over the world, right? We're in Dubai now. By December, we will have done 70 million dirhams. Now, for you to understand that in Naira, multiply it by 158. And we started in January. We just, we just finished with our UK team, right? They, you know, they we're selling UK properties. We're selling Nigeria. So you can turn things around, but you need a mentor. Who do you know? Some of you say a yeah, pure water business. Who is the mentor in pure water? Who has made it in pure water that you are trying to go to? Me? Oh, uh, God, I saw a vision. I saw a vision. Yes, it's bakery. Who has made it in baking? That you go and meet and say, I want to learn under you. Show me the way. Oh, event planning. No problem. Who is a successful event planner that you have gone to learn? The same way in ministry. Let me share this with you. And this is very powerful. The reason why pastors have multiplied in this country is because of the mentorship principle in the body of Christ, particularly among Pentecostals. Mm, mm. Mentorship, mentorship. Right? That's the reason. A Godman Akilabi is mentored by Samadhi Emi. A Samadhi Emi is mentored by Oedipo. And Oedipo is mentored by Daddy Gio. So there is that structure. So there are ministries boom, 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 blowing everywhere. When you do the same in business, you cannot fail. I, I have failed in more than 10, almost 20 businesses. I stop failing when I make sure. I don't care how profitable a business is. If there's no mentor, I'm not doing it. If there's no training, 
You won't see me there. I don't care how much money people have made. I don't care. I don't care. So, are, are we blessed? If you are blessed, type I'm blessed. I hope I'm not too hard on us. No, sir. Make it deeper, sir. <laughs> Number four. Have a kingdom financial goal. I think some of us are not inspired to build wealth because we don't have a kingdom financial goal. One of the powerful kingdom financial goals Bishop Oedipo had was that he wanted to build many churches for Jesus. He never planned to be a pastor, but he wanted to use his money to build churches. Right? You can have that goal. Right? To say, in my lifetime, I will build 200 churches for Jesus. Now, of course, now you know you have to work out to make the money to start doing it. Mm. One of my goals mm. is that I'm going to build, be building the largest university in the world. Right? And it's going to be 50% scholarship and changing the destinies of men. One million people will go to school because of me before I leave this earth. One million. Have goals like that. People set that goals. That God, if you bless me with money, these are things I'll be doing. Right? Last month, for six weeks, we we're feeding 1,000 families in Lagos. We didn't even put it on social media. 1,000 families every week. Every week. Trust me, if you'd say, oh yeah, raise your hand. Lord Jesus, all of you, 1,000. <laughs> would they not? Lord Jesus, I confess, they will give their life to God right there. Right there. People-centered, kingdom-driven goals. You cannot say you're a born-again Christian, you're a pastor, and you don't love people. Whether they are, they, they are Christians or they are not. You must have people-centered goal. Goals that will touch humanity. Evangelism without social transformation is a waste of time. Say it again, sir. Oh. Right? Evangelism without social transformation is a waste of time. Because they will still go back and steal. They will now be... No, no, no. They are Christians, though. And that's what happened with the Corinthian church that Paul was saying. Homosexuality, adultery was in them. They were Christians. The Corinthians just were Christians. You saw all that Paul was complaining about. But there was no social transformation. And it's the same thing Nigeria is suffering from. People who truly have given their life to Christ, but they are falsifying figures in the office. They are politicians. They will come to Holy Ghost every first Friday. Hey, hallelujah, my daddy, daddy Jew. I will die for daddy Jew. But they have stolen two billion. Why? Because we have not empowered our people on how to build wealth in a righteous way. How to become wealthy. Legitimately. So people give their life to Christ. But they are back to to cheating, to cutting corners. So one of the things God has been opening my eyes to is we, they give their life to Christ. We empower them. None of those students we send to school will graduate without a business or a job because the, the anointing is supposed to help you to become a wonder in the marketplace. A wonder. My life is a wonder today. People just, I don't know how you do it. I say, you know, we, 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 we are not just learning. We're also adding the Holy Ghost to it. So I'll go to Harvard University. They will teach me, but we also still go to the Harvard University of Heaven. When I mix earthly Harvard University, heavenly Harvard University, an explosion of call. Right? But somebody will say, no, no, I won't learn the earthly Harvard. As I speak to you, with all the success we are, we are doing, I'm still running a real estate course in Harvard University, as I speak to you. Next year, I'm doing another course of founder course. One fifty thousand is the one twenty thousand dollars. Sorry, one course. So as we are getting divine ideas, we are also learning the system that governs this end. 
Okay. So number four, have kingdom, people-centered goals that will drive you. Because people always ask me, so why are you, you have enough money to take care of your family? Why are you still moving? I say, oh, you don't understand. You don't understand. One million people must go to school. Through me. You don't understand. God has shown me certain things I must do to change people's life. That I must do. Very soon, next year, we're building uh, our orphanage. You just registered our foundation. In the last 13 years, God has used me and our foundation to send 5,000 kids to school. We call it Infinity Foundation. Now we've changed it to Steve McTier Foundation, just got the name. And next year, we're building orphanages, we're building schools, we're building primary, secondary, unique school that will be teaching kids about money so that they, they graduate like this. They are either starting business or they are so valuable. So we are not giving them good values. They go there, they are not able to use it and they start you know, cutting corners. So whatever skill we are giving them is something that is useful in life. Okay? Number five. Okay, number five. Destroy fake doctrines in your mind. Destroy them. Oh, um, uh, um, the, uh, uh, um, money is the root of all evil. That's a lie. There's nothing like that. The love of money is the root of all evil. No money. The love of money. No money. Money always, okay, takes the image of the owner. Money is a magnifier of what already exists. If you are proud, you are rich, you'll be prouder. If you are humble, you are rich, you'll be humbler. Money just take the shape of the owner. Money is not the root of all evil. So we have some negative doctrines, some wrong doctrines, some unsustainable doctrines. Oh, you know, I fed you with the spiritual things. You must feed us with carnal things. If they say they are not feeding, come, will you not take care of your family? The Bible says, he that is not able to take care of his family is worse than an infidel. Right? So let's change some doctrines. Oh, all rich people, you know, we don't know how they got their money. That's not true. There are people who made money legitimately. Oh, if I start making, you, you know, somebody sent a message to me one day I was teaching on how to connect with billionaires. And these are principles I've used to connect with very wealthy people. And you know what the person says, how do I know a billionaire that is doing money ritual and the one that is not doing? I said, all the billionaires I've met, there's none that did money ritual. Where do you get that mindset from? Where did you get it from? Where? Where? Okay. What is our mindset? Mindset. Mindset. Oh, if I become rich, I won't be able to serve God. Says who? Says who? That's Dr. Stephen. <laughs> Says who? Says who? So we need to change those mindset. We need to change those mindset. When you change them, you are on your way to where? One of the mindsets you need to change, people of God, is the mindset that you can never be as successful as some people. It's a dead, demonic mindset. As far as you can see. Let me share this with you. Do you know? And this is very powerful. And, and for those of you, I know many of us here are pastors. You need to, and this is also another mindset. Empower your members to be rich. Do you know that? Do you know that our father in the faith in the Bible, there are more kings than priests? Go and read your Bible. Just that some doubled it, but the first role was they were king. Some later added priests. Abraham was he a priest? Isaac was he a priest? Jacob, was he a priest? What do I mean by that? When we say priest and king, king are entrepreneurs, right? Government officials, politicians, those are kings. Priests are pastors. In fact, the full-fledged priest only started in the time of what? Eli 
and Samuel, isn't it? And what happened again? They rebel. And you are seeing a sign of it in Nigeria, isn't it? Where people are saying, Pastor, forget it. You are stealing our money. So what happened? You, we move back to the era of what? Kings. So then we have King David, who also was able to add the priesthood to it. But was first a king. I can go on. Build kings in your church. You kings. The reason why you need to learn about business is so that you can raise businessmen. God bless Pastor Matthew Ashimolo about this area. God bless him for this. Pastor Matthew will spend the whole month teaching about business. And it's not business he didn't do. He did them. And he's been doing them for years. Right? He's been doing them. Let me share two powerful stories that inspire. Okay, I'll share them on that number, number six, so that I can move with speed. So please raise kings, raise entrepreneurs in your church. Because one of the biggest secrets of people like Bishop where they put that the Jew is because the kings they've raised over the years are able to come and minister. Mm. The kings they've raised. But if you have an idea what they suffered for these kings, if you have an idea, I'm not mentioning the name. There was a bank MD, a spiritual mentor, heard about his challenge with his bank and called him. He said, What do you need? Do you need money? Can you imagine? Do you need money? To a bank MD, whose bank is struggling. Said, do you need money? So we don't know what these people had to do for these kings. All we hear is so so person bought that Joe Rolls Royce. So so person bought private. You don't know <laughs> what these fathers are we together now? Raise kings in your church. Raise kings in the early days. Of redeem when that geo became geo, many of the meetings were holding in hotels as daddy was attracting top professionals. And because he's also a, a, an elite, being a, a, a mathematic doctor, so he was able to attract a lot of these top elites. That's how a lot of the top people who started Pastor Tony Rapu. Pastor Itu Agodalo, go and study this. They were professionals. Pastor Itua is a chartered accountant. Does, I mean, the people who patronize Pastor Itua are top billionaires. Like, was able to attract these people. I hope we are learning. Right? Was able to attract people like Pastor what? Yemi Oshibajo, top lawyer who give their life to Christ, right? And today, we know the rest of the history. That's why Redeem is in Banana Island today. It was because, right, the kings were raised. Top professionals were raised. And they were encouraged to succeed. Encouraged to succeed. One day, because I was pastoring uh, a particular zone in Winners in Canada. I got confused. My business started growing. I had to start traveling. And I remember going to meet one of our senior pastors. And I told him, I said, no, I will cancel the flights. You know, I, I will, he said, and, I, and he smiled. He said, go and do your business. He said, if we... Because we gave you a zone now, your business crumble. Will church feed you? He said the reason you were praying was for this breakthrough. Now that the breakthrough has happened, we will not held it back. There are some wrong things some of you have said to your members. Oh, because you are doing business now, you are not coming to church. Yeah. If he has to travel, you should send the sermon of the day to him. I said, wherever you are, pray. Read the scripture. Here's the video of today's psalm. Stay fervent in the Lord. Don't tell him not to do his business. 
If I didn't have to start traveling all over the world, are we going to have GTS over Dubai? Are we going to have GTS over UK? Right? But we say, no, no, don't, don't, do, don't do that. Don't do that. We have clear court assignment. The priest must wait on the Lord. Right? The kings must go out and go and preach the gospel in their, in their office. In the, in the plane, when they are going for a business trip, preach the gospel to your fellow businessman. Okay? But don't say, oh, because are we learning, by the way, men of God, are we learning? Because I have seen churches that were, you know, poor, and you are pastor only poor members because of the things you are saying. 8 a.m. prayer meeting. What are you talking about? 8 a.m. Shouldn't they go to work? Now they have guilty conscience. Somebody gets a job. He said, my pastor said I must come for prayer meeting. He goes to work late. They sack him. How will he pay good tithe and offering? 8 a.m. prayer meeting. 8 a.m. Come on. There are ministries that have been destroyed because of things like that. Ministries that have been destroyed. So there are certain things we need to destroy. Doctrines, mindset. I have businessmen in my church, let them go to, to their work. I have career people. If, in fact, I would rather suggest if you want to do ATM, say those of you who don't have job, we are doing career clinic for you. And after the career clinic, we will now fire prayer. Bring your CV. There are no body. Anybody that cites your CV must give you a job. That's the kind of thing we should be talking about. Customized programs. That solves the problem of members in church. Yeah. Right? That solves the problem of members in church. That, that, that really is still Lord at answering their challenges. The ones who are, who are having, I mean, see what, can we all clap for, for Pastor Daniel for putting this together? Is this not what ministry is about? Please, everybody clap for him. If pastors are struggling financially, can we bring somebody who God has blessed financially to open us up? Open us up to what can we start doing? What direction? That's how to do ministry. It should be customized to solve problems of the people of God. Okay? Number six. Start from where you are. This one I like. Don't say, hey, where do I start? We all started somewhere. <laughs> we all started somewhere. Start from where you are. Oh, I cannot afford a lucky phase one. You don't understand. All I have is two million. Start with Ikorodu. Start. Yes. Start with Ikorodu. Start with Shima. Start with Ibejuleki. Start from where you are. Oh, I don't even have any money. Go see Shingbai. You know, they my hand. Become a property broker. Mm. This one, don't say it anywhere. If you say my name is attached to this, I will deny you. Many top pastors in Lagos are property brokers. Yes. Many members want to buy property. Would they not come to pastor to pray? And pastor will say, I know somebody credible. Right? And indeed, credible. Not that, I mean, as a pastor, you won't go and be saying you are uh, doing property brokerage for somebody that is not credible. Right? And once um, the person buy, what happened? Will the owner of the company not, Malaka will not rest? I know a pastor in Lagos, like that, he's helped several of his members to get properties here in Dubai. And they've been grateful. Many of them are having rental income, making money, thanking pastor for directing them in the right way. But guess what? The person still gave pastor his commission for referring members. Is that not the best way to end legitimately rather than to be waiting for? You know why many members cannot tell you they have money? Because they know you. Immediately you now start saying, hey, you know, church has a project, uh, glory to God. You know, how much did you say you have for property again? 10 million? Funny enough, the money we need for our next uh, kidney con is exactly 10 million. You know, I'm not saying you should sow, but you know, I just, you know, <laughs> come on, let's stop gimmicks. 
right? There are more legitimate ways of doing it. If you lead well, many of them will come to you, sir, I want to buy land. Can you pray for me? You will pray for them and you guide them right. And something has come from that. If I know another pastor, I have a pastor friend in London. He didn't even say he needed a commission from me. Right? But he sent me several members who have done business with us. But again, you think Malachi will not come? Hmm? <laughs> he didn't need to say it. I don't know how you understand. It's like because we give 10% commission for any property uh, you sell. So by common sense, he, he didn't register, he didn't tell me, but when those things happen, something goes to him. To so just say, they thank you for referring this person. It's a seed. It's not, I don't even tell him it's commission. It's a seed, right? Seed. God bless you, man of God, for what you've done. So these are powerful principles. And do you know, I noticed that that pastor is not me alone. I'm not his member, by the way. He's that way with his church member. Any good thing is calling them, go and try this. So he's not even doing it because he's even expecting anything. You know? It's just him. Right? He wasn't even doing it for anything. It's just him. He sees when by he's trying to channel them in the right way in opportunities that can change the lives of these members. He's been that way and he doesn't lack anything. Those are pastors who would succeed. They genuinely care. Genuinely care. My wife was with uh, Bishop Oedipo was it two months ago. You know, she was giving me you know, uh, um, update about how Bishop came to her level. What do you do? You know, I started giving advice at that level. Men of God, calm down. We know I'm not in plenty. We know, we know. But calm down. Calm, come back. Calm down. She said, all oh, true. In fact, Papa was like a comedian with them. They were just laughing all true. He came to their level. Not all. <laughs> the ecclesiastic of epistosus of the innuendus of the Latin and the Greek. <laughs> okay, drop Latin. Drop Greek. Face Malacca. <laughs> I like that. Drop Latin. <laughs> drop Greek. Face Malacca. <laughs> so start at your level. Start at your level. Whatever it is, start at your level. Don't say, you know, uh, you know, I'm a pastor. They cannot see me. I told you, I was selling popcorn. No get shit. Those who were mocking me then, hmm? co-pastors, <laughs> who felt I was disappointed. You know, on campus, you know, Sweden, and I think this is for most universities, either you're a cultist or you're a Yahoo, Yahoo boy or you're extremely handsome or you're a pastor on campus and everybody's calling you daddy. Those are the big people on campus. So in my own case, I was rubbishing the big ah, man of God. Glory to God, man of God. <laughs> Doing popcorn. But those humble beginnings is what got me here. The dignity in labor is what got me here. That I was not ashamed to do what is legal, the right thing, a good job, a good business. Facing my job, facing my business is what got me here. The dedication to duty. Our fathers in faith, you don't understand. These people work 14 hours a day. 14 hours. 18 hours. Diligent. That's how they got here. So start at your level. Start. Start at your level. Don't mind that somebody say, oh, the pastor is still doing this. Don't worry. Face your God, face your business. Every of these pastors that have a dignified life, go and check their life out. They have a business. They have a business. And let me tell you this. Put together 100% of the 10 of the pastors that are doing very well in Nigeria. 10. I'm not talking of our fathers. Though. I'm talking about the ones who have 50 downwards. Right? Put them together. I will tell you six is into real estate. Let me say that again. And that takes me to number seven. Make real estate priority. 
make real estate priority. Some are doing it privately. Some are doing commercial. I don't know if you know, Pastor Matthew Ashimolo has a real estate company. The same way we have GTEx homes. Real estate company. If I, one day, I, w- I was shocked. He did a video. Hello, my name is Matthew Ashimolo. This line, when we started it, da, da, da. yeah, you can invest, you can buy two plots, three plots. I said, child, man of God. As he drop his anointing, as he weaken his impact. Hmm? Say, no, no, I'm Matthew, I'm Shimolo. You don't understand. Dr. Stephen, you don't understand the caliber of who I am. You know, the anointing, you know, cannot be seen selling. I can't be merchandising. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> May God give us wisdom. Amen. <laughs> May God give us wisdom and the grace to execute these things. I'm going to take a few questions as... Uh, you are about to share two stories. So people have been commenting. Wait, wait, the stories. The story. <laughs> two stories. And there are two real estate stories. Since we have a lot of redeemed people here, I'll start with the redeemed one. No, let me end with the redeemed one. I don't know if you know Pastor Paul Adifarasi. If you know him, type I know him. I know him. So, you know, as on the rock started in VI and they were using a Muzon Center. So there was a time they needed to, I mean, they needed to have their own place. They were there for too long. I mean, it was becoming a real issue. They tried to get land in Victoria Island. They were too expensive. Average land was going for 100 million per plot. The church didn't have that. So there was a, you know, they got a land in now known as Lekki Phase 2, but then it was just, bush, swampy land, nothing there. And they couldn't move there because it was bush. They bought this less than um, 10 acres, a little less than 10 acres for 25 million. Everybody type 25 million. And they left the land there. It's called land banking, under real estate, land banking. And they left the land there for 10 years, 10 solid years, left the land, fenced it and left it. 10 years after, I want you to guess how much was the value of the land. Can anybody guess? 10 years after, from 25 million, can you guess what the value was 10 years after? Somebody say 200 million. Ladies and gentlemen, 10 years after, the value was 3 billion naira without anything on it, just bare land. From 25 to 3 billion. My question to you, if man of God did it for church, did you think he didn't do it for himself? Ah, so when people tell me, oh, pastor, I'm using church member money, I laugh. I say, you don't understand how they got the money. These are top realtors, land bankers, right? Land bankers. In fact, this one was even made public. I think it was Pastor Paul Judah was saying, particular land that he bought. That he bought it from a top senior man. I think maybe it was from Pastor Bishop Waleoke. Yeah. These people, these people, <laughs> these fathers invade and real estate business is their number one powerful secret. And they use land banking. They will just buy the land and fence it around, keep the document, leave it there for years. For years. So, Number two, this one, that is you. You even shared it in redeem. The church needed to expand. In particular, they bought a land, I think it was in a sherry, I can't remember where. That is first stack. And they said the land was 50,000 naira per plot. That you say, eh, where do you want me to find that money? This was many years ago. And he said, you know, we don't take loan. In fact, he said they would have removed him if the structure of the church was such that he could be removed. Because they were, they, 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 the Eskos felt this was a good land. There was no reason not to get it. He said, let's look for another. The following day, someone was going to Ibadan. He heard some people talking. And there was this land. And they said it was 6,000 naira. 
the man called that Jew. So people are talking about one land here, 6,000 there. The Jew said, tell them we are buying it. Tell, we are bu bu bought, sold. They should not sell it to anybody else. That land is known as Redeem Camp today. It's grown, it's expanded. You and I know that with one million naira, you can't get land dead. Can you? <laughs> Chimawa now. You can't get one room. Our fathers in faith grew their personal wealth and even the ministry wealth through land banking. And I'll tell you why they did that. The first commandment God gave man in the garden was land. Subdue the earth. Dominate it, replenish it. Was land. That's the first assignment. It wasn't even wife. <laughs> That's why those of you who are single, <laughs> if you pick woman before assignment, you've missed it. If you pick wife before assignment, you've missed it. God gave man assignment before he gave him his wife. The wife was to help the assignment that was given. Was to help. So the first assignment God gave man was to subdue the earth. Dominate it. You take over. That's the assignment. God didn't ask man to dominate another man. Many of us as pastor, you are dominating your members. That is Antichrist. The domination is in land, is in property. Take over. Get take over. Buy. Buy companies. Buy industries. Buy. That's the domination. If you look at the Lord's Prayer, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come here, here, not in heaven, here. Let it come. The only way you can, listen, when you own land, you determine the religion of the land. You determine the law of the land. You determine what is done on the land. That is why if you don't own, if you call yourself pastor and you don't understand the land dominion, you are joking. The evangelism starts by taking over the land. That's the evangelism. Get the land. How did you think we became Christians? How do you think the British did it? They took over the land. They colonized us. The queen owned the land. And you, of course, they don't attend Roman Catholic or, or Methodist or Anglican. That's why we, became, we will not have known about Jesus today if the British didn't take over the land. I rest the case there. God bless you. Thank you for having me. Wow, 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 wow. I'm standing sir. This is, this, this, is, this is awesome. This is just awesome. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you very, very much, sir. Thank you. Ah, Dr. Stevie, this is, thank you very much, sir. I'm so, uh, we are so blessed. I'm blessed. My, my note is full. My brain is full. And uh, I'm, I'm excited that I'm part of, of this. I'm excited that. Thank you for making this available. Ah, Jesus Christ. Thank you very much. These seven principles are just too strong. But uh, uh, before we start taking questions, I have a question for you, sir. Sir, how did you move from poverty to the next level? Maybe somebody needs your story, sir. Thank you so much for that. So I, I was born in Mediguri, uh, northern part of Nigeria. My mother was a civil servant. My father was a businessman, but he's lost his business before I was born. So a quite poor, I mean, three square meal was not guaranteed. At some point, I had to move to a village in, in Mediguri. Because we couldn't have, I mean, landlords were chasing us <laughs> all the time. And um, growing up in secondary school, what hurt me the most was my mother used to take me to her neighbor to borrow money to send me to school. It just, I just knew something was wrong with that, that kind of lifestyle. You know, borrow money, send me to school. Some of them would not even borrow the money. Look at her with, with disdain. So I started reading. That get me to get very hungry to learn. I had this cousin who came. 
it was into a multi-level marketing business. And, um, you know, he started talking about business. He was doing well. We knew him too. He was poor like us. I said, you know, so I read my first book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And that started the journey for reading about wealth. That's why I started by saying study about money. That book, I hosted Robert Kiyosaki um, um, last month. Yes. So because that man changed my life. Rich Dad, Poor Dad changed my life. I said, we did richest man in Babylon, taught me about savings, you know, think I grow rich, that blow my mind that I could be as rich as I want. Are you kidding me? So those books were powerful. Uh, by the time I got to the university, I had a mentor who taught me in second school, you know, and he got good grade in University of Illinois. So I entered Osu. I came to visit him only to see him in one room apartment with eight of his siblings and other people. I remember what my mom kept saying, go to school, get a degree, you'll be really wealthy. <laughs> so I said, oh, oh, mom, kilo shelling. Say, didn't get a job, things are difficult. So I remember those books I read, that this will be my story. If I graduate without learning to build businesses. So, which was why when my colleagues were not serious about business, I didn't mind them. The day of every month, I was in Redeem selling popcorn. I was doing this. I sold books. I sold all man. Because I, I hawk electronics. I understood that there was no job out there. If, because, and I knew this, my mentor is very intelligent. He got a good grade from a, a, a federal university. Me, I'm attending a state university. I'm not as educationally sound as this man. Uh, the man who got good grades, federal university didn't get a job. Is it me that went to Osu? From where to where? So I faced the reality that, look, I need, I, I vowed that day. I remember leaving Lagos back to Agoy. I said, when I graduate, if there's no job, I'll create one. I will so build myself in that way. So I kept reading. I kept organizing events. I mean, I was core entrepreneur. I mean, core. Core entrepreneur. I organized it. I remember organizing the largest drama event. Uh, in uh, um, Nosu, over, um, we brought RCF, brought everybody. I mean, Osu then, I'm always either in RCF or teaching on entrepreneurship, one thing or the other. And um, so, when I, oh, fortunately, unfortunately, by the time I was my final year, so when I was straight fair, my mother died of ovarian cancer because I had realized that when I graduate, she probably would take a loan for me to start business. And that was how my business dream died. Because now the person who could have lo loaned me money to start business proper outside campus was dead. And um, so I, I printed 100 CV, I had a cover letter, don't pay me until I, I get, um, I can perform and you are confident I can do it. One of the companies I went to is Philadelphia, like you said, Visible impact. The manager looked at my CV, said there's no table and chair. So they don't have, I mean, because again, salary wasn't going to be the excuse anymore. And um, so the third place I got to was our church, the, the job bureau. The man looked at me. He was an angel, really. I still don't know the man till tomorrow. He said, Stephen, You've done business on campus, continue outside campus. I said, I need experience. And he said, I want to see if there's no job, continue. So Bok SMS was one of the business I started on campus. A fellowship wanted to do, they had a conference. They gave me 700,000. And I think it was Fountain of Life solve or something. And then I added 300 Naira to it, making 1,000. I helped them send the SMS. And that's how I learned about Bok. Bok SMS. So it was the easiest I could because I didn't need capital. So all I then needed was to be doing adverts. So I, I used to do photocopy, buy Bok SMS for 75 common. Started posting, I'll go to 20 schools in a day. In those, in those days, people didn't even know what Bok SMS was. People just know, say, GSM was still new. So no more texting. So we'll go to school and educate them that you have so many parents. Right, you can't be sending messages one by one. You can send at once. 
You can remind them for school fees. You can remind them about resumption. You go and educate 20. In fact, many of the schools just gave me the money because when they saw, I was striking, I didn't even have money for transportation. So by the time I'm getting there, I'm dusted, my eyes red due to the stress. So many just, I'm sure, patronized me. I said, to open an account, just 500 naira. <laughs> they probably just pity me. See? This one. <laughs> that's just, and that's how I started. And gradually, gradually, you know, business started growing. 2015, we did over 100 million. That's when we went into real estate. The rest is history today. Hmm. Hmm. So did, did you start real estate as buying land or as a, as a, a broker? Yeah, so I started real estate. But I started brokerage like five years before I started development. Right, so I was a broker. I I I, I sell for company, which was the edge I had, because by the time I then started development, I already understand the marketing system, understood how to sell. You know, many of the land I was selling then too, and this is why you have to be faithful. The land I was selling then, one of the land I was selling was Shimawa. They would bring us to the back of Redeem, tell us that I do plan another. Uh, there's another uh, Redeem camp that they would do. There will be airport. There will be one story. Say I want. If I, I was selling without believing the people I was selling for, you know, I just had to sell because I needed money. I remember one of the client. And funny enough, that's the funny thing. My first client, the day I was meeting, I was there. She was paying. I just forwarded those messages, and they believed. I was very good with the article. So at the bottom, I would just write, "I can sell. You can buy property from me. We have this property." So when we were even taking that one of my first clients to the site, if not that my older brother and the MD of that company started, I would think they were going, it was money ritual. Because we had left the old campground and for over one hour, 30 minutes, we were just going, dusted road, just going. Do you know the humbling thing today? The campground they are talking about is the new auditorium. It actually was true. For me, little man of faith, I just couldn't see. That place was, I didn't say that you were saying they would build 10 million, one kilometer, it's I remember I used to do book SMS prior to that time. I know how I would trek the old camp. It takes me almost 20 minutes or 30 minutes. Somebody is now telling me there's another bigger one. And so we should, people should be buying around that area. It will appreciate. <laughs> I wish, and the funny thing is, I wish I even bought those land because <laughs> I was just selling and getting commission. Today, all those land are, I mean, you know what has happened to Shimawa now. So, and that's the lesson really, because a lot of these things were teaching, it's difficult at the beginning. And that's why there's power in the right company. Paul, I mean, Saul prophesied when he was in the midst of prophets. Right, so even though he didn't even know what he was doing, but he still prophesied. Either way, the biggest thing you can do to change your life is to start moving with rich people. Two poor people cannot help themselves. One must first get to the top before he can throw the rope to help the other one. The biggest deliverance of your life is to stop calling yourself poor and feeling comfortable when people say we poor people. Tell them I'm not one of them, even if your clothes is faded. Join the rich camp, mix with rich people. And it, it, people always think people will not agree, they will not attend to me. Ask Pastor uh, Daniel here, right? He didn't even know I've, I've been seeing what he was doing. It just, it just takes the courage of reaching out, the courage. Well, what you are looking for is looking for you. Write that down. Say, <laughs> ooh. What, what you are looking for is looking for you. It is looking for you. Just need the courage. Just need the courage. So I started actually by selling for, for others. So when I started my development, I already knew the marketing. You know, I was quite, and it was easier because the first land was waterlogged. We, we, so we couldn't even get to our land. We were on another estate land. I will not be pointing trees. But remember, those were the type of land I saw for some people too. That I also didn't even have faith. So now I was able to sell with faith because 
I have had the experience of how I looked down some locations and they eventually became successful. So my faith was alive this time to say, hey, this is my life. And you know the funny thing, that land now is fenced. We, you know, with some few most a good part of it. I mean, it's now a good location. Um, so I started by saying. So it's like uh, the lion and the bear strategy. Mm. Facing Goliath, come with the lion and the bear strategy. Absolutely. By, by selling for people, you can now sell yours. Yes, absolutely. But yeah. make sure they're a credible organization. That because I mean, many sold for companies that were not credible and they, they lost their reputation because clients eventually felt like, uh, and also go for training, understand what you're selling, study it. Because there are times where people, like one of the, the things that I, I was um, privileged, like I said, if I made that mistake with my first company I was working for, but my age was that my brother was working there. So it was just out of faith that my brother works here. So whatever happened, let's chuck it. But if not, I would have fought those people out of ignorance because I didn't even, you know, like, how can you call myself? Because my client came to me and said, it was Bush they were selling to me. And the day I went there, to me, I realized that it was really Bush, right? But because, I, and that's why we say study, because when you study, you now understand the concept of land banking, the concept of, I mean, they are developed land, of course, that you could buy, but many people can't afford it. Hence why you may start with a far place, leave it for a while, and it will appreciate. One of our estates started three years ago. 1.5 million was when we launched it. It was Bush then. Of course, it's first round now. It's currently going for 15 million, man of God, three years oh, after. Jesus. 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 If you see the place three years when we launch it inside the thick forest, you say, what are these people talking about? What nonsense? What are they? In, fortunately, again, they've now done the road in front of the, the government have done the road. It wasn't ah. hard. Everything was bushed there. Now they've turned the road facing us. Oh. So that's how this thing works. Um, Thank you very much. I, 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 we have a lot of questions. I don't know how many you want to answer. But let me say, let me ask this question. Nobody's asking it, but I believe somebody will need it. What are you looking for in somebody that can be a mentee? Uh, because I, I discovered that our generation don't understand mentorship because they weren't mentored. Okay, for example, now I've come across many pastors who cannot mentor you successfully because they weren't mentored. Mm -hmm. So they understand the language of mentorship. And then you spoke about the fact that mentorship was one of the greatest things that transformed your life. Uh, learning from your spiritual father, uh, father pastor, uh, Bishop Oedipo, and then your financial mentors. What should a mentor look for in a mentee? And what should be the disposition of a mentee to a mentor in terms of... Yeah, thank you very much. Beautiful question. Beautiful. I love this. Um, I think number one is hunger. If you're, if you're looking for a mentee, look for a hung, somebody who's hungry. Mm, hunger. If you are hungry, they will do whatever it takes to get there, to, to follow your principle. Even when they disagree, they will just do it because they are hungry for success. So uh, I personally can't mentor anybody who is not hungry. And if they are hungry, they will do whatever it takes. Mm. Um, you know, two, poor, two peas you must not have in your life, poverty and pride. Mm. <laughs> hungry people can, you know, are going to be humble. Right. Well, you're not hungry, you know, uh, what are they saying? You know, what's the big deal? You know, is it not God that blessed him? Did you not lend it free? I'm sorry, I didn't lend it free. This year, I have paid two, two oh five thousand dollars I didn't lend it free. Is it not God that dropped it on his head? Why didn't God drop it on your head too? Right? There are two ways to get a mentor. You serve or you pay. You, you serve or you pay. So, uh, that's number two. Look for people who are willing to pay you or serve you. Sometimes the money is not... My mentorship money goes into my charity work. Most, most of the money goes into our foundation, what we do. So it's not like the money is needed. But listen, do not, okay, take seriously people who do not place value on your anointing. Thank you very much, sir. 
Don't take seriously such people. If they don't have the money, they will serve you for it. Right? Elisha served Elijah. And Elisha came from a wealthy home. Go and read your Bible again. He left everything and went to serve. Right? So, and you saw that with the apostle of Jesus. Peter wasn't bad. I mean, I, I was in Israel um, 2019. We still saw Peter uh, in law's house. Well, I mean, for the house to still be there, it wasn't just an ordinary house. And Peter, uh, mother in law, you know, really took care of Jesus. So it wasn't, Peter wasn't like, you know, but the point is people who really value what you carry, they will know that there has to be a price for it. Well, you see people want it free, free, free. They don't value you. They really don't value you. And don't take, uh, don't take them seriously. They either want to sell or you pay. But you have to do one of the two. But it doesn't come free. It doesn't come cheap. There is a cost to it. And right? there's a cost to it. There's a, my school fees, house rent, all went into ministry service. Yet I knew I was not going to start a church. And I knew I was not going to full-time ministry. But everything went. I missed test and exam for, for kingdom's sake. For, because I had, you know, church ministry work. That's how, that's how I sat. Yet I knew it wasn't like, <laughs> I knew, if I, I remember when I was a day pastor in Winners, I literally didn't even go for interview. I told them, I'm not going to full time. This. My pastor was saying, I know, I believe with this, your passion for God, you know, you will do full time. I said, I'm not. I just love God. I just love God. It's not about what I will gain, what I will get. It's not about uh, position. I just love God. I don't know any other way. Just love God. Right? So uh, those are the things. A couple of other things. Faithfulness. Uh, I can't stand someone who is not faithful. Don't, don't work with people who are not faithful. Well, somebody says something, and I'm not going to mention because of the sensitivity of the word. He said, if my senior pastor, now this is a ministry, the number two person in the ministry said this about the number one. He said, if my number one tell me to do something that will make me to go to hell, I will still do it. Hmm. Faithfulness. Somebody did something and used his mouth to tell me. Said he had the, you know, and then he met Daddy Gio. This, this person worked closely with Daddy Gio. And, you know, he reported something about another pastor that he thought he was doing the right thing. And Daddy Gio said to him, you have failed the faithfulness test. He was the one telling me. He said, we never forget to be that, that statement. He said, this man recommended you for this job that you have failed the faithfulness test. So don't mentor anybody who's not gonna be faithful, right? Whatever excuse they are giving for not being faithful, they were not faithful. It's like a man who beat his wife, and says because, you know, of her character. No, her character revealed your beating habits or your beating nature. But the reality is that you're bitter. You can't change that. So don't say, you know, my wife did this, that's why I beat her. You, you're a bitter. A character just brought it out. So if a man is not faithful, claiming the other person will. I see people do it in ministry. They're not faithful the ministry that God has called you to serve. And he says, because the salary is little. It's because they are not taking care of your welfare. Did you not say God called you? Go and tell the God that called you. How can you be paid? Well, some of you have said it to God. That's why he sent me today. Yeah, you have heard seven. Okay. I intentionally didn't go into do this, do that, do this, because there are a couple of uniqueness to issues. And, um, and, 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 um, and I don't want to turn this to like a marketing or so that some of you don't think I came here because I want to sell anything. Right. The goal was to add value. Right. 
you could do some of these things with any organization, with anybody you know, but at least you have a pathway. You know you need to have multiple streams of income now. You know there are, you know, um, other th a lot of other things that you could do, right? You could go meet, and plus I'm also not that affordable. That's also another challenge. <laughs> uh, I have coaching from 20,000, then the, um, I think the cheapest of my coaching program is 10,000. Sometimes I do, I do discount, you know, 70%, 80%. So if, as pastors now, so I asked you to go and pay 10,000. Where will you find it from? So it's better to show you the pathway and God can guide you to other people who may not be as expensive as I am, that you can work with and learn some of these things. But at least you know where the direction needs to go. Yes. So I, I want to uh, plea on behalf of the people that attended this conference, um, we the university. Many of you don't know about Doctors University, Financial University. I applied for it. Uh, registration closed on the twenty eighth of October. I don't know whether because of this, but I just said it for the first time. Who are probably not following you? Uh, maybe a, a one week extension. It's just uh, the discount is twenty four dollars, and that is very ridiculously cheap. Uh, please, maybe you can. Uh, is it a telephone? Noah, Noah, is that true? Because I'm not aware. <laughs> Noah, you reduce university to twenty-four dollars. I think that's a discount, sir. Let me hear. Let I think Noah is there. Where's Noah? Because I, those decisions are even made by the head of Civitas. Uh, subsidiary. I'm not even. I mean, I would probably shout. I mean, forty-seven dollars. Oh ha! Forty-seven dollars. Forty-seven dollars. So, for the sake of these people, maybe they like, can do like two-day opening again till mm -hmm. November. It's, I know that it's two fifty dollars. So we did some discount uh, for forty-seven dollars uh, for people to sign up. Uh, it's a monthly. Um, program so if you if you now don't want them to charge you you need to cancel it before the month ends else is an auto billing so i need to say this now before you come and say oh they are charging my card it's a monthly stuff right so if you want to stop after the first month you need to cancel um because the content there you learn from coaching from um robert kiyosaki is there les brown is there Brian Tracy is there, Grant Cardone is there, right? You know, I mean, all my, you know, so a lot of these things we're talking about opportunities from e-commerce to Forex to real estate, they're all there, videos, right? Um, and I think, yes, for, I recommend that strongly. Two things I think I should recommend, uh, my university, which is timaktauniversity.com, and then my latest book, The Billionaire Habits, um, so I, I, I think the, um, if no one is there, you can post the link. I've also posted the link. Um, okay, but the link was sent to only panel alone. So let's see if we can share the link. Yes, I'll be willing for Pastor Daniel's sake. We will allow you get the um, university link. I think, um, I think um, you need a Daniel, do they need a code for the university to be able to get $47? Or you have reduced the price already? As at the time, as at the time of the registration, there's no need for it. As soon as you are done, the whole process is open, I think. Oh, OK, by the time you did it. So I don't know where, the, where Noah has gone. Noah. So I'm here. So. Have you reduced the price to $47 or they will need to use a code to reduce it? We'll, we'll do it. We'll do it for them from 12 noon tomorrow. No, can you do it now? Do it now. Do it now. Now. Okay, sir. Okay. Do it now. 12 noon won't work. Do it now. Then we'll give them till midnight to, to subscribe. So do it now. So can you all clap, Pastor, clap for Pastor Daniel for all these things he's doing now, right? Because um, 
Okay, sir. Yes, you can post the link um, for both the billionaire habits. You can and then the university post that that um, Noah so that they can sign up. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I have some questions here, sir. How many questions are you willing to take, sir? So that we don't stress you. People are hungry. They came hungry, <laughs> and they are willing to draw from you, sir. It's already um, 12 30, 12 27 here in Dubai. You know, we're three hours ahead. <laughs> and I have to still go back to work tomorrow. So I okay. give us till 1 a.m. Okay. It's whatever question we can take today. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Somebody's saying, sir, my fiancé considers full time ministry as a work. He said his hands are not empty, that God called him to full time ministry. So how do I handle that? And now, even as a pastor, many ladies have reported their fiancés to me saying that he doesn't have a plan, he doesn't have a vision, he's saying, God called him, God called him. How will you take care of me? God called me. How will you say, but Peter Nettu is also a minister and he's taking care of his wife, he's not broke, the God has blessed Peter Nettu, he also blessed me. So, <laughs> I don't know how you, maybe you help, help, maybe help us address. It's, it's Peter Nettu that needs to tell us how God has been able to Bless him to take care of his wife because they all want to model after P. Daniel. So, <laughs> so I think it's P. Daniel that needs to share. Uh -huh. <laughs> right, because I, I, I agree, a lot of uh, uh, wives are really frustrated. And, and, uh, and I can imagine. In fact, I had a similar experience with my dad. My dad believed God called him to ministry. And honestly, he, he, he didn't do much um, to take care of the family. My mother had to do all that, five children by herself. And is the reason why none of us are into full-time ministry today. Right, some of us, I think God called us, but we had to tell to you know negotiate with God <laughs> to say, look, we don't want to repeat what our father did, right? Where um, and and you don't want to do that where your children won't want to, you know, serve God or go into full time ministry because your life wasn't an exemplary one. Look at how Bishop Oedipo's sons, the two sons are in ministry. Because, I mean, who doesn't want to be in private church? Who doesn't? When ministry works, right, your children are begging you to join because it works, right? So, but the secret, like I said, is our fathers in faith are entrepreneurs. They may not teach this on the altar because they don't feel they should. It, they feel it will rub off the ministry. Some feel, I mean, they have their reasons, right? They have their reasons. We have people can who do these things for them. So uh, some might not be uh, business intelligent, and probably there are people in their team that God has given to them to help them learn the businesses. No, some became busy, and so they had to delegate it. Because we need to also face reality here. By whether you're educated or not on investment, our fathers, based on their age, their generation, they were doing property. It was the law. Everybody will hammer it in your head in their days. Chotinile, Chotinile, right? So, and this is why many of them, their wealth is actually very strongly real estate based. Of course, you can, we agree that the type of the uh, forex aspect of uh, crypto and all these things is new. So some of them are not even into that. Some were into that, yes, they had people who are doing it for them. But that real estate one, I can assure you, forget it, they know that one well. Trust me, nobody knows real estate better than people like that. Did you, that you understand real estate? The way it was planned was meant to drive traffic, right? That property in those areas. Remember that from day one, they had that vision of building a residential accommodation, right? That, that takes somebody who understand how real estate works. I, I don't know really you understand what I'm saying. They, they may not personally be driving it because they don't even have that time. And they have enough people around them, like you said, that God has, has, has taught that is very skillful. But I can tell you that they knew the 
opportunities of their days. They know of their days, right? Many God people to do it for them. And, and we need to, because many of us want to give that excuse, oh, that Gio doesn't do this. Or Gio doesn't do this. It, it's not true, right? They may not personally, uh, like I said, be involved, but they have put structure. And you are not yet at their level, right? Life is in phases, men and says, leave your size part time. I met a man, uh, Cornerstone, the father-in-law to Bishop Febi Daosa. And he was saying to me, he said, the first printing machine, Bishop Oedipo was using 1986, I gave him. He said, what many people are comparing themselves with Bishop Oedipo didn't know was he was already into printing business since 1986. Hmm. He was able to place himself on salary from the printing business. So which business does your church have? Let's, let's face this fact. I told you now that winners was structured in a way that has more than 10 sources of income. So this was how some of them did it. Some didn't do it for themselves. Like a lot of Bishop Wede post money from uh, books and all that goes into the ministry, right? But what then happened was by a certain year, right? The source of Bishop Oedipo, because Bishop started authoring books early. People are, whose life has changed, he got healing, started sending money. If you go to Bishop's office, there's no currency of the world you will not see. They send them from different countries. Right? So at some point, he will stop being on salary since 1987. Right? And what comes in from sons of the prophet alone? And this is also part of the secret of Daddy Gio. Right, where what comes from sons of the prophet? Oh, yeah, what do I need really? What do I need? But this real estate, hmm. I was going to my first one time, somebody showed me a property on the express road, white. It has a landing gear for chopper. And until I pass, I did my research and confirmed that it was owned by Daddy Joe, I was shocked. Oh, right. By the privilege of what I do, hmm. 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 don't don't dare this. You don't understand what this book command. Let's not go into details. So don't far away. A far away, will she, she. right? You know, a far away, will she, she. that's just the lesson. Don't compare, right? Because you are not at, I don't really understand. You're not where they are. You're not where they are. These are people where, where they are today. On a monthly basis, millions come from their, billions come from their sons to them. And yet, what I'm saying is that those money still go get invested into assets, into this, whatever somebody is doing for them. You are not there. Get something to do, right? Get something to do. So don't tell me you're a full-time pastor. Don't tell me that. Paul, I told you. Sell used to, I mean, Paul was selling mats. Go and read your Bible, it's there. Paul was into business. Yeah, let it become a body. Go and check all Paul's conversation about giving. He was mentioning it there. Paul literally was doing shakara to them, like, look, I'm not a body to you guys. I'm not a body. I, I, I don't know about me, but when I read the Bible, I read it like uh, a guy is talking to the next person. I don't read the Bible the way, see it down. So right thou, talk as thou. I see conversation, I see gist, <laughs> right? So, and I think we need to start reading Bible that way. So that it can, it, it can come to our level. We can see things from, right? From a real layman's perspective. Oh yeah, you should also ask uh, Pastor Daniel. He has also tapped into those things. If you didn't, I won't be here. Right, so. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sir. Somebody yeah. is saying that uh, as a student, how can I, I think you have answered the question that you were even doing business as a student. So how can I do business as a student? It's, I think you mentioned that. I sold Kuli Kuli on campus because mm -hmm. I, I, I had the testimony of a friend. One of my friends went to UNAD and in UNAD there's no good gary in Uruko, 
and the guy is from Ondo town. So there is good Gary in Ondo town. So, and people want good Gary because students. So yeah. the guy will come to Ondo. He, in fact, he started by announcing anointed Gary all over the campus. So they bought a bag of rice, a bag of Gary before he, before he brought it. So yeah, yeah. How, many, how many robbers? Well, is he available now? Tomorrow. How many robbers? How many robbers? <laughs> so he sold the bag. He collected the money and went to Ondo, bought the bag of rice and brought to school. So the Gary finished that day. Went back again from, with that money, another bag, because there is good Gary in Ondo town. So <laughs> when he told the story, I also on my campus, I went to start selling Kuli Kuli. kuli. I saw that Kuli Kuli was, there's a place in my school where they do Kuli Kuli. So people want Kuli Kuli. What I did was that the Kuli was just normal Kuli Kuli that is nowhere packaged. I now package it, I put label on it, sealed it, and I began to sell. Wow. Inspired me. So, and then because it was me, and then I was very popular on campus, and I had, I had people in different hostels selling Kuli for me. You see? So people were in different hostels. So I had money. People were surprised like that. I sold Kuli. <laughs> I have money from selling Kuli Kuli on campus. So start from I, I start from where you are. Yeah. What, what is it that you have? Start from there. What skills do you have? Then money answers to value. It doesn't answer to prayer. It answers to value. What value can you offer? I have people who sponsor themselves through school by just babbing their friends' hair because they know how to bab. So mm. carry the clip out of school, make your make the front of your room a, a or, or the or the lobby a a, 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 a barber center. And so start with what you have. To be amazed, I see many now. Everybody is into digital marketing. I mean, not digital marketing as it were, but WhatsApp marketing. You mm -hmm. buy pants and uh, uh, underwear, so, somewhere and bag. You post it. Somebody on your status see it, and then people buy what they see regularly. So they mm -hmm. keep your status every day. They keep seeing the pan. They keep seeing it. As, mm -hmm. And then Doctor Stephen taught us today: tie your seed to something. Okay. So when you come to fellowship or you come to pastor and sow a seed, oh God, by the end of next week, all the pants must be finished. This, that's it. It's just so, start from where you are. And you, with just 1,000, there are businesses you can start that you don't even need capital for. And then affiliated market, affiliate marketing. Look for people you can help market what they are doing and get commission. My younger brother is a big boy. He makes money. And I asked him, what do you do? What do you do? He said, there are guys who can do websites. He doesn't know how to do website. So he's mm -hmm. the middleman, he's a broker. So he, he, the website is for 15,000 era. He gets it for 30,000 era, gets 15,000 era cut on his, on his, on, on, for himself. So he does about like five guys, that's about 50,000 era. And the guy is living big by that's just it. getting people, connecting people. That's it. That's so it. For that person, I think that's the answer to your question. And somebody was asking that uh, how, how was I able to do as a full time ministry that my life is, a, is better? compared to what uh, full-time pastors should look like. <laughs> God doesn't call you to suffer. Doctor, uh, doctor said dignity, labor, and value. The value you offer determines the kind. And then when you start interpreting dreams for the butler, you see you remain in the prison. As soon as I start interpreting the king's dream, you start getting to the palace. Yes, sir. Just increase value. And interpret dreams for kings. And king's money with king's malachi. We look for you. Yes, King's Malachi. <laughs> now that I'm connected to uh, Dr. Stephen, the author of the Bilonia habit, I, <laughs> I'm going to start experiencing Bilonia Malachi. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to connect with grace. So my level has changed forever. I can't go back to where I'm coming from. I've just shifted 10 level. <laughs> it's Billion Malachi that I'm entering to now, sir. Hallelujah. You know, Come you on. This <laughs> program. <laughs> That if I'm still praying for money for program that I'm still I'm still expecting manner, I have moved. Mm. You know, where I'm at is coming 27 to 30. Next year, where I'm at, no more manner. No, no more manner. We will even give the budget. Promised land. Yeah. I mean, yes. once they get to promised land, manner stopped. Yes, sir. And, um, so uh, many of us are already in promised land. We're waiting for manner. I mean, the cloud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The cloud, the cloud has moved. <laughs> yeah. uh, 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 let me take one more question. We we'll allow you give your. I'm not sure you mentioned anything about regarding tech. At this rate, wouldn't it be advisable for everyone to have a tech related skill? So, what do you have to say about that, sir? Yes, you should at least in digital marketing, you must be able to sell online. 
one of my biggest skill is uh, um, I'm, I've mastered the art of selling. Um, I'm a good salesman. If you do not sell, you will be poor. Everybody's selling something. The biggest secret of that Jew is, is our ability to sell the gospel of Jesus, holiness, in the most simple form. No complication. No complication. The simplicity at which that Jew sells the gospel of Jesus is why he is that Jew. But don't get it twisted. That is a salesman. Yeah. How does he do it? Simple sermon. Tell you what Jesus can do. Tells you the healings that has taken place. At the end of the day, he closes you. How does he close you? Huh? He closes you by telling you to come and give your life to Christ. If you want that type of healing, if you want that kind of breakthrough, if you want that kind of, you see? So the first thing is debate, which is Jesus can do anything. Jesus did it. My daddy said one time, there was one man that was sick one day, who touched his hand, he got healed. And then he said, hey, I'm having that same problem. <laughs> right? And then what happened? Closing time. Do you want that to happen to you? Come give your life to Jesus. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. So, closing, you see, emotional marketing. In oh. fact, that, that you does this very well. The path for emotional marketing. You tell a story of somebody who is his uncle. He used to go and talk to him about Jesus, talk to him about Jesus, this final time. And when he prays for him, the man will recover. This last time, he told him, and that's how the man died. He didn't go to heaven. Ah, <laughs> Lord, I don't want to leave this. If I come back, you go and give your life to Christ. But the point is, everybody is selling. Everybody. You know, Ronaldo is a good salesman. It's not just that he's good in, sell, in, 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 in playing soccer. He's good in selling. The guy gingers his team. See how he's enter man you motivates the team. That's sales. Convince them. He said it, announced it day one. He stepped up. We're winning. We're winning championship. We're winning. These are salespeople. Nobody rises to the top of their feet if they don't know how to sell. Right? Nobody. Nobody, nobody. Pastor Daniel, here's a salesman. How did he, how did I connect with him? I saw a young man doing the work of God in a very unique way, right? An amazing way. So, and he understood also how to communicate the gifted, right? Today he's in this place, we just returned from here and connect with the children of this generation. Why do most young people follow Pastor Daniel? He understand the language for the youth, how to communicate, right? And then with the raw anointing, there are a lot of people who also have their level of anointing, but they don't know how to communicate, right? The giftings. So ladies and gentlemen, go and learn the art of selling online. Master it. Evangelism is no longer physical, now it's online. It's evangelism, right? Your ability to preach the gospel, you can reach one billion people one day. If you understand and master traffic hacking, how to get hey. right? Traffic hacking. Yes. Uh, please explain that, sir. <laughs> traffic hacking basically is, uh, you know, basically how to generate leads, uh, um, you know, mastering the art of generating leads for a particular thing. So we should start having, you know, honestly, I think we should start having e-crusade, right? Yes. I'm coming up with one, sir. Eh? I'm coming up with one, sir. Uh -huh. Should start having e-crusade that we literally can count. And you know the beauty about e-evangelism, e e e-crusade, scientific. We can measure exactly how many people showed up. Can, it can, it's tangible. We can even measure how many give their life to Christ. It's the new face, ladies and gentlemen. We left the internet too long. Too long. For the devil. By the time we came back, demons were flying all over. Right? Master TikTok. Love you, Pastor. Say, Listen, I have a guy. I have a TikTok consultant. 
Let me tell you how much I pay me a month. 5,000 dirhams. So let me calculate that to Naira. Because, you know, all these figures. If you don't convert to Naira, you don't appreciate it. 158. And 790,000 is what I pay one man every month for TikTok. Most people on TikTok cannot even buy what I'm selling. But if you understand the art of selling, you go and wait for a generation. Go and wait for a generation. Go and wait for them. Uh, so you're already there. By the time they could afford my property, it's me they know. Nobody else. Right? <laughs> That's, these are powerful um, things. So, yes, the skill, one particular skill you must have digitally is the art of selling. That's where, of course, when you then master that, you can do affiliate marketing easily. You can do, okay, one more thing I'll do for you guys. For those of you, everybody I've been sharing how they can they be affiliate on the house. There's a website you can go, portal.gtexhome.com. You can register there for free. You'll be able to become, sell any of our properties um, anywhere in the world, UK, US, Dubai, you know, Nigeria. You get commission for any property you sell. Um, Noah, can you drop the um, Vivian's number? So, so that's the website. Make sure you register before you call Vivian. So if you now need any support, something is not clear, you can call Vivian. When you register on that site, he will send you a mail with a WhatsApp link. So you must join the WhatsApp community because that's where you can ask for materials and, and things like that. Somebody is asking for crypto crusade. <laughs> okay so um yeah uh thank you thank you very much i, I i'm not going to stress this beyond this uh i i understand not to take advantage of opportunities i know this cost this would cost a lot now that we're having it free I, because i want some other time i wouldn't <laughs> stress this too much thank you very much sir. one more thing sir uh, you are going to pray for us. I believe in the prophetic grace upon your life, sir, uh, that can that that brings about it. We are going to receive that prayer uh, uh, because we are spiritual people. But uh, people have been asking, uh, how do you contact doctor? Please just reach out to him on Instagram. The links have been dropped over and over again. Instagram, Facebook, follow him on Instagram, on Facebook, uh, on on Twitter. Uh, follow him and you will get updates and from what he's doing by the grace of God. You know, I don't, uh, for those that have been coming for YMR, you know, anyone that the Lord doesn't lead me to, I don't associate with them. Uh, I'm not, um, I, I don't take, uh, I don't jump on relationships. I, I'm, I'm moved by the leading of the Holy Spirit. And uh, doctor is a man of faith that uh, the Lord the Lord asked me to reach out to, and it turned out to be something, just check out for what God is going to do. My level has changed, you know. I'm not getting billion Malachi. Hallelujah. So, <laughs> <laughs> my level has changed. Uh, for, for, of course, you know, he's one of my mentors. Uh, um, and I trust that your life and my life is about to change forever. For those trying to ask that, how can you contact me, Daniel? The links of my platforms are also, uh, I, I believe everybody should know me, but I'm surprised to see how can we contact you. So, <laughs> How did you get here? Maybe you, those who came through us, anyway. Yeah, because we okay, got, okay. yeah, maybe it was those who came through. So the links of my platforms are posted already, so you can also reach out to us. Uh, sir, I want you to pray for us, sir. I want to say thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I want you to pray for us, release the prophetic grace over us. Uh, and I know our life is about to change forever. Why? Because we will not just be the hearers of this word. We will labor with it. We will, we will labor with it and see results. And you'll be happy because you will hear our testimonies and it will shock mm -hmm. the world. You'll be happy that you invested in us. Over to you, sir. Mm -hmm. So some of you are asking for my books. Um, you can go to stevenactel.com um, for slash billionaire habits or just go to store.stevenactel.com. My books are there. 
Uh, one of the platforms I recommend is my YouTube channel. You can go subscribe. There are more than 1,000 free uh, videos on different things you can do. So if you even say you can't even afford $47, so still go there. There's still more uh, free information that can change your life forever. Father, we thank you for the privilege of fellowship and learning about kingdom, wealth, kingdom principle. We give you all the glory for the life of Pastor Daniel and the people you have raised him to lead. We thank you for the project 1 billion souls, the project 10 billion souls. Only you could have put this in a man's heart. Lord, we bless you and we give you all the glory. We thank you for the people you're raising with, to work with him. The 1 million young evangelist who will go and reach out to the one billion souls we give you all the glory because this is done and our dear father we also ask that you give us kings kingdom billionaires who amen. will sponsor these amen. projects amen who are blessed financially to be able to sponsor projects like this lord we ask that you will raise kingdom stars Kingdom financial uh, yeah. giants yeah. who will be part of this vision, part of this ministry yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Lord, we pray for every one of us here the grace to practice the principles Jesus taught us. Uh, we receive it today in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, we'll make heaven, but we'll also be blessed people on earth here. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you all the praise. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you on behalf of myself, my wife, my two daughters, uh, your grandchildren, and uh, all the mentees, sons and daughters, and pastors, friends that God has given to, brought around us, we say thank you. Thank you for this truth and some of my senior pastors are here i can see some of my senior pastors also here thank you very much for joining pastors thank you very much sir thank you the lord bless you sir Amen. i'll reach out to you after now so thank you very much sir. No problem. thank you for having me god bless you all god bless you everyone sorry uh, bro no people are asking can they get a recording for this meeting yeah we can send you the link and um, we'll probably just Upload it on my YouTube channel, then send you the link, and you can share it to everyone. I think we should do that. Okay, okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sir. Good night. So the link will be available on my Telegram via after the website, after the YouTube, I just the Telegram channel, so you can get it. Thank you very much. Why am I December 27th to 30th? Don't miss Why am I 2021? It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. Don't miss it at all. God bless you. You just check everything on my on my Instagram page at P Daniel Ola one day. You will get all the details you need. God bless you. Thank you. Bro Noah, God bless you. <laughs>